continued. Now, some of you may have also heard about certain medicines called antivirals. The situation with antivirals will be similar to that of vaccines. In the beginning, there will not be enough for everyone. And dependent on the characteristics of the pandemic virus, available antivirals may or may not be effective in fighting that particular strain. Well, if we can't fight the pandemic flu with modern medicine, then what? There's a page in here that talks about all this stuff we should do, but they'll be really important during a pandemic. Ah, here it is. Cover your cough and sneeze by using a tissue or the crook of your elbow. Dispose of the tissue right away. This prevents further spread of the virus left in the tissue. Wash your hands, wash your hands, and wash your hands. This is the single best way to limit the spread of a virus. Use soap and water or alcohol-based products designed for hand sanitizing without water. Keep your hands away from your face, especially your eyes, nose, and mouth. In between hand washings, you may pick up more viruses on your hands. Your skin is the best defense against infection. And by keeping hands away from your face, you reduce the chances it has to enter your body through an opening such as your mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Don't share your germs with classmates, coworkers, or others in places such as church, the mall, and the grocery store. Stay home when you are sick to limit the spread of illness. Gosh, this all sounds pretty scary. What will it be like when the pandemic really does come? It depends on how bad the virus is, and scientists just don't know until it comes. The doctor knew the families would have what if questions, so there's a page in here about that. Oh, great. Social disruptions. Public places are closed. Public transportation is limited or isn't running. Individuals are sick or caring for the sick and can't work. What if there aren't enough workers to provide resources, such as electricity, clean water, or delivering food to grocery stores? Prepare now. Create a family emergency kit. In the event that these things may happen in a severe pandemic, it's important for individuals and families to prepare now. Create a family emergency kit that includes non-perishable food, water, flashlight and batteries, toiletries, and other supplies you may need that may not be available in stores during the height of a pandemic. Limited health care availability. There may not be any room left in hospitals. There may be a shortage of health care workers, and medical equipment such as ventilators may be in short supply or run out. What if, I think my family member is getting sick, should I take them to the hospital? Prepare now. Keep supplies on hand to care for sick. Even in a pandemic, many sick individuals who are not critically ill may be cared for safely at home. Ensure you have supplies to care for sick individuals in your family emergency kit, such as over-the-counter pain relievers, thermometer, tissues, oral rehydrating solutions such as Gatorade or Pedialyte, and bleach to disinfect. Schools and daycare centers are closed. What if my child's school is closed, but I still have to work? Prepare now. Create a plan. Talk to your employer. Begin considering now what child care options may or may not be available to you. In the event of a severe pandemic, public health officials may recommend that schools daycare facilities and colleges and universities be temporarily closed to limit the spread of infection. Create a family plan to determine who will care for your children if you are sick or must go to work. Consider also discussing the possibility of pandemic with your employer. Do they have a plan to deal with employee absenteeism? Do they allow for teleworking? or other alternative work schedules that could be used to help families care for children when schools are closed. Wow, you really did learn a lot at school today. I think pandemic flu is a really serious issue. I think we should learn more about it and how we can prepare as a family. Did he tell you where parents can go for more information? 
I really want to learn more about this, but it all seems so scary. Can't we just pretend that nothing's going to happen until we actually have to deal with it? Yeah, it does seem sort of scary. When the doctor first started talking about it, I, I didn't think I wanted to hear any more. But the doctor kept talking about how if we all got informed and prepared that those preparations could really help and it may be able to reduce the number of people who get sick. Just think how much scarier it would be if when the next pandemic happened, we'd never heard anything about it before. You're right. Here, Mom, Mr. Smith says we, can, we should share this page with our families and neighbors. It talks about how we can get informed and prepared. I think when your father gets home tonight, we'll all sit down together and go to some of those websites and start putting together our family's plan to be prepared. The Georgia Department of Human Resources Division of Public Health is glad that you have taken the time to learn about pandemic flu, along with Jake and his family today. By watching this video, you have taken an important first step in getting informed and being prepared. Unfortunately, as I told Jake's teacher, pandemics are a fact of life. Although we don't know exactly when one will occur or just how severe it will be, public health and our partners have been preparing for the worst. Here in Georgia, public health officials have been involved in numerous preparedness activities and have been developing and testing plans in partnership with organizations from sectors such as public safety, agriculture, health care, nonprofits, transportation, utility providers, faith-based organizations, media, business, and elected officials at all levels. The state has been working with health care providers on plans and increasing surge capacity. Efforts are underway to purchase additional medical supplies that may be needed, such as beds, ventilators, and masks. Discussions are occurring about stockpiling antiviral medications that may be helpful in lessening the severity of illness in some. Collaborative preparedness activities with our federal partners in government, such as Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, and the Georgia private sector community have been underway for years. Additionally, local pandemic influenza coordinating committees have been developed throughout the state to engage their partners at the local level and have been reporting their progress to the state to ensure collaboration and appropriate allocation of resources to ensure readiness in all areas. While much work has been done, there is still much more to do. Part of that work is to help our most important partner get informed and be prepared. That partner, of course, is you. All good preparedness efforts begin with each individual, so we hope that you will take what you've learned and build on it by visiting any of the websites you learned about today to stay informed about new information and begin to create a plan that will help you and your family get prepared. We would also encourage you to call your local county health department and learn about local preparedness efforts and how you might get involved. Talk to your employer about pandemic flu and ask if your company has a plan and most importantly, share what you've learned with loved ones so that they too can begin to get informed and be prepared.